Hello everyone. Here is the second part of the chapter bricks. In this chapter, we will be dealing with harmful ingredients in the brick, manufacture process of bricks. First is harmful ingredients in bricks. First is lime. We have already seen this in the first part. If the lime is excess, it will cause a slaking and leads to the unsoundness in bricks. Second is alkalis. Alkalis causes staining and efflorescence. Third one is vegetative or organic matter. If vegetative or organic matter is present in our brick, it will decompose over time leading to some micro cracks in the brick making the brick porous and reducing its load carrying capacity. Fourth one is iron oxide. If iron oxide is present on burning process it will undergo oxidation and its volume changes. This will lead to the disintegration of bricks. Next is stones and pebbles. This will reduces the available area for the load transfer, thus reducing the load carrying capacity of bricks. Last one is sulfur. Next is manufacture of bricks. It involves four processes. First is preparation of clay, then molding, then drying of bricks, then burning of bricks. Let's see all of this one by one. First is preparation of clay. There are certain processes involved in it. First one is unsoiling. When you are selecting a particular ground for extracting clay for the manufacture of bricks, the top part will contain more impurities. So, the top 20 cm soil has to be removed. This is unsoiling. Next is digging. The remaining soil is excavated and spread over a level ground. Next process involved is cleaning. This extracted soil is cleaned further to avoid organic matter, stones and pebbles. Next is weathering. In this, the soil is exposed to the atmosphere for a few weeks or months to carry out its softening. Next process is blending. If any ingredient is in deficiency, we will add that ingredient to this weathered soil that is called as blending. Next process is tempering. In order to make the bricks, we have to change this weathered clay into a required plasticity. This process is called as tempering. It is done in puck mills. It is an important question. The definition of tempering and where it is done. This picture is the figure of the buck mill. You can see the consistency of the clay. How plastic it is. Next process is molding. The prepared clay have to be molded to required size and shape. For that we have to use the mold of about 8 to 12 percentage greater than the actual size of the brick. Since on drying, the brick will undergo shrinkage. This mold can be made of steel or wood. On molding, we will make certain inundation mark on the brick which is called as frog. Let's see what is the purpose. It is used to indicate the trade name of the manufacturer. It sometimes acts as a shear key for the mortar in between two bricks. 
It is usually provided on the top face of the brick. It is at a size of 1.2 cm depth. Here we can see the figure of the frog and some trademark is made on it. Next is different types of molding. We can do molding manually or by use of machine. In hand molding, we can do that in ground molding method or table, mount, table molding method. From the name itself, you can see what it is. In machine molding, there is plastic clay molding and dry clay molding. Next process is drying. Fresh, fresh clay bricks that is after molding will have about 70 to 30 percentage of water. After drying it will have only up to 7, 5 to 7 percentage of water. In some textbook it is given that the water content will reduce up to 2 percent. If we are carrying out artificial drying, its the temperature is about 120 degrees Celsius. The drying by placing the drying is done by placing along a small face so that the large area should be exposed to atmosphere. Next process is called as burning. On burning, the temperature is usually 900 to 112 degree. Sorry. On burning, the temperature will be usually 900 to 1200 degree Celsius. During burning, Lime and silica fuses. At this time, first of all, the dehydration of the bricks taken place, then oxidation of the compounds present in the brick, and finally vitrification. That is, the brick will later become a brittle material. Burning can be done either in a clamp or in a clean. Let's see something more about a clamp. If we are doing a brick manufacture on a small scale, we can go for the clamp. In a clamp, first of all, a suitable piece of land is collected. Generally, it is in trapezium plan. The shorter side of which is kept in excavation where the longer side is raised by an angle of 15 degree. It is usually made up to a height of 3 to 4 meter in 4 or 5 courses covered by mud. Bricks are allowed to burn for a duration of two to four weeks and then further it is allowed to cool for another two to four weeks. For the clam you can use locally available fluid, no skilled labor is required to operate it and comparatively it is economical. But the problem is the time required for the burning is comparatively more. And also, the burning and the cooling process of the brick determines the quality of the brick. In the clam, we have a very less control over the burning process. So, the quality of the bricks obtained is not uniform. In the picture, you can see the trapezium plan of a clam. 
Next is Clean. Clins are large oven which are used for the burning of bricks. Depending upon the mode of supply of bricks from the clins, they can be classified as intermittent clins and continuous clins. If all the operation of loading, burning, cooling and unloading is done one after another in series, the supply of bricks comes out to be intermittent. Such cleans are called as intermittent cleans. If all the operations that is loading, burning, cooling and unloading are done one sorry simultaneously the supply of the bricks comes to be continuous. Such cleans are called as continuous cleans. Example of continuous cleans are given bull trench clean that is used in India, Hoffman's clean or flame clean and tunnel clean. Here the Hoffman's clean is the one that works throughout the year. That's all about this video. In the next part, we will see the testing and the types of brick. That will be the last part of this chapter bricks. So, if you have any comments on the quality of the video contents, you can comment in the comment section. And also, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up. If you are interested in watching this kind of video related to civil engineering, please subscribe to my channel. After the last part, I am planning for a question and answer session video related to the topic of brick. In that, I will cover all the previous year questions that is asked from this session. Thank you all.